let them get a view from there and um, okay. see what the field of view looks like. Get back and into the cable. Okay. We're about to talk about deep space. We decided to stop taking some space from you and start taking a look at space in general. Starting us off today, we have a never before seen deep space radio signal detected in 2023. The radio signal comes in the form of an FRB, a fast radio burst, which is a bright flash of radio light that lasts for only a few milliseconds before disappearing altogether. The fascinating thing about this particular radio burst is that one, it comes from far beyond our own galaxy and two, it is highly active and frequently repeats itself, meaning its behavior is incredibly different from any other FRB observed to date. Sophia Scheich, lead author of the discovery, was quoted saying, this work is exciting because it provides both confirmation of known FRB properties and the discovery of some new ones. The FRB was observed 35 times by Scheich and other scientists over a two month period with each burst coming from the exact same unknown source. And an unusual pattern emerged in the bursts when observed for an extended period of time. Usually, reoccurring FRBs get lower in pitch as they go. This one, however, is different. The pitch goes up and down with each burst. Scientists believe the bursts are coming from a neutron star called Magnetar, the core of a dead star with an incredibly strong magnetic field. And they are probably right, but on the other hand, perhaps it's a signal coming from beyond our cosmic simulation, proving that none of this is really real. Next up, we have a very recently detected radio signal that has NASA scientists pretty confused. It's a repeating radio signal from deep space that cycles every 53.8 minutes. It's been dubbed ASKAPJ1935 plus 2148. It's coming from a neutron star about 15,820 light years away. Neutron stars are incredibly dense remnants of massive stars that have collapsed in on themselves. According to Dr. Manisha Caleb, an astrophysicist involved in the study, what's strange about this discovery is the slow pace of the signal. Most radio signals from neutron stars are a lot more rapid. Astronomers used the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder or the ASKAP radio telescope to detect and study the signal. They found that it has three distinct emission states, each with its own set of characteristics. So what is causing the strange behavior of the signal? Too soon to know. Next up we have the Space Roar. Subtle, right? Now, as a general rule, there is no sound in space. But of course, when science, engineering, and mechanics all intertwine, we are still able to pick up sounds when using the right tools, which is exactly what happened in 2006 when scientists used a listening instrument tied to a balloon 23 miles high to pick up a signal that was six times louder than anything they could have ever expected. Like, honestly, they were shocked and confused, but overall, incredibly excited. Before the transmission came through, scientists had expected to observe the sounds of an early star, but after hearing the transmission, an early star being the origin of the sound was pretty much entirely ruled out. Now the theory is that the combined radio emission from distant galaxies created the sound, but of course that's just a theory. In reality, scientists really have no idea. But not knowing the sound's origin is not the only problem the signal has raised. There is also the fear that the volume of the signal will interfere with efforts made to search for signals coming from the first star stars that formed from the Big Bang. Of course, the obvious theory jumps out. Could the space roar be an attempt at keeping us from revealing the truth about the universe? Discovering that it's all just one big cosmic simulation, you know? Or is it yelling at us, begging us to look into it more, so we can discover that this is all just one big cosmic simulation. The James Webb Telescope may just be able to spot intelligent life out in space and not in the way you may be thinking. It has to do with greenhouse gases. So a recent study from the University of California, Riverside, suggests that we might detect alien civilizations by spotting the artificial greenhouse gases on their terraformed planets. Terraforming involves modifying a planet to make it habitable, and certain gases like fluorinated methane, ethane, and propane would be telltale signs that this was going on. These gases don't occur naturally in large amounts, but could be used by sentient life to warm up their planets. Edward Schweiderman, an astrobiologist leading the study, says, quote, these gases would be good for a civilization that perhaps wanted to forestall an impending ice age or terraform an otherwise 
uninhabitable planet in their system, as humans have proposed for Mars. So the James Webb can detect the infrared signatures produced by these gases, which can survive in atmospheres for up to 50,000 years. So no, nothing's been spotted yet, but it is something they're keeping their eyes open for. Next up, we've got the Southern Ring Nebula, which NASA has tricked the public into believing is the performance of a dying star, when in reality, it's clearly a rendering flaw in the simulation, giving us a glimpse into the world of our creators, or so they say. But if you want to believe NASA, here's what they have to say. The phenomena is caused by the dimmer dying star sitting in the center of the image, sending out rings of gas and dust in all directions, which it has been doing for the past couple thousand years, while the brighter star star next to it illuminates the appearance of the nebula, making it incredibly beautiful and almost inviting, like you want to go through it. The event, which was observed almost head on by the James Hubble telescope, has made scientists incredibly excited because the clarity of the image is a gateway to the secrets of the nature of dying stars. But I personally think it's a gateway into the real reality, and this image is really just the matrix begging us to escape, but okay NASA, alright. James Webb Telescope recently spotted a series of star clusters that may very well completely change the way we think about the history of the universe. These star clusters could be the oldest in the universe. The star clusters were found in the Cosmic Gems Arc, which formed just 460 million years after the Big Bang. This arc, originally detected by the Hubble Space Telescope, gives us a crucial glimpse into the early stages of galaxy and star formation. The Cosmic Gems Arc is approximately 13.3 billion light years years away, but with the Webb telescope, scientists were able to pinpoint five massive and dense star clusters within the arc. These clusters are believed to have formed during a period of intense activity in young galaxies, contributing to the ultraviolet light emissions of their host galaxy. Unlike ancient star clusters in our Milky Way, which have survived for billions of years, these young star clusters are giving scientists insights into the early stages of star formation, which is pretty interesting. All right, next up we have the Carina Nebula, basically the opposite of the aforementioned Southern Ring Nebula, which shows the death of a star. The Carina Nebula is a landscape of star birth, or at least that's what NASA wants you to think. Personally, I think it looks like the early stages of landscape rendering. I mean, we've been asking for life on other planets for some time now. Maybe whoever's controlling this cosmic simulation has finally started to listen. But of course, if that line of thinking doesn't quite sit right in your simulated brain designed to reject the idea that free will doesn't actually exist, let me tell you what NASA has to say. Apparently, according to the Space Agency, the Carina Nebula is not proof of simulation theory, but instead, it's an emerging star nursery. And the image captured by the James Webb Space Telescope shows individual stars in the Carina Nebula that were previously obscured due to cosmic dust particles. Sure. Next up, we have unexplained light fluctuations coming from a star in the Cygnus constellation. Scientists still don't know what's causing it, but one theory is that there's an alien megastructure surrounding it. And that's not just an internet theory, that is something a number of scientists have proposed. It's often referred to as the Tabby Star Dyson Sphere Theory. So the strange dimming was first spotted by citizen scientists throughout the Planet Hunters Project using data from the Kepler Space Telescope. Tabby Star showed extreme dimming, sometimes up to 22% in brightness. Now, there are tons of ideas about why this could be happening, but the alien megastructure is, I'm sure, the most of what we want to hear. This hypothetical megastructure known as the Dyson Swarm or Sphere could have been built by an advanced extraterrestrial civilization to harness the star's energy. We really don't have any solid evidence of this at this point, it's just that possibility because of the constant dimming intermittently, but there are loads of possibilities. Next up, we have Quasar 3C273, a supermassive black hole feeding on humongous quantities of gas located in the center of the giant elliptical galaxy in the constellation of Virgo. It is also the first quasar ever identified and the optically brightest quasar discovered to date. Quasar 3C273 is incredibly powerful, capable of emitting hundreds and possibly thousands of times more energy than the entire energy output of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. 
Way. Which means it probably has enough energy to power the simulation of our Milky Way and the illusion of a surrounding universe. I'm just saying, when we are looking at Quasar 3C273, we could actually be looking at the computer that made us. Finally, we have Bernarda Nalini Bernstein, which is a really big comet that's been detected. Really, really big. In fact, it's called a mega comet. Stuff like this. Makes me kind of wish we were living in a simulation. Speaking of simulations, is it Bernardellini Bernstein or Bernstein? I don't know if anyone's gonna get that joke. But anyway, the thing is headed in our direction and will make its closest approach in 2031. Luckily, it'll pass us by by about a billion miles, which is good because it's 100,000 times more massive than your average comet, measuring 85 miles across. Just a reminder how it's not really as empty up there as it looks most of the time. My money's on the Burstein Bears comet. That's yeah. what I was thinking too. What's a Baron stain? Baron stain, that's when a bear stains your carpet. You guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Catch you next time. Cheers. <laughs>